Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. Uh, because of the Libyan crisis this week, I've had an opportunity to put forth an analysis in a number of uh, venues, uh, some interviews with Informativo Pacifica, KPFK Los Angeles, on uh, Monday evening, an interview with Kopp in German, which was posted, I believe, on Tuesday. On uh, Tuesday, I was then on with Alex Jones, both before and after this earthquake we had here in these parts. Uh, 25 minutes on press TV on the afternoon or evening of the 23rd, and rents from uh, 11 o'clock to midnight. Then on Wednesday, uh, Kevin Barrett's Truth Jihad Radio, two hours. Then a little bit later, East Village Radio with Joshua Reyes and others. That's, that was in the evening. And then yesterday, Thursday the 25th, we had uh, Russia Today, direct with Moscow. There's also in the works a Russia Today Arabic service appearance. Press TV, uh, short interview in their news. Independent Network News with Tom Kiley. Uh, an interview with uh, Kopp again in German at the end of the day. So that's that will all be reflected sooner or later on tarpley.net. Uh, let me also announce on September 11th, I will be joining INN, that's Tom Kiley, uh, Lenny Charles, Val, and others in Manhattan for their uh, all-day-long symposium seminar on 9-11. I'll be on one of the panels. They will have a uh, studio audience and that will be broadcast, so that will all be available. And there also, uh, I think on September 21st, I'm going to be on an FM radio station in Paris, France, and that will be en français. So uh, th this is now coming up, and I'll have some more to say about 9-11 about in a minute, but let's now look to Libya. This has obviously been uh, a, uh, a tragic week for Libya, but maybe not in the way that NATO would have uh, liked. Let's just see what happened. These events seem to be now in the distant past, but they've just happened. Um, part of this is based on Cherie Maison's reporting, Franklin Lamb's reporting, Lizzie Phelan, Darius Mahdi, Nazem Rawaya. Uh, we're concerned about the personal security of all of these people. Some of them have been threatened. According to their reports, they accuse CNN correspondents of delivering threats to them, saying, cut off your anti-NATO coverage or you may be in danger. So let's see what happened here, starting in particular on Saturday. This is called a coup de main, a Handstreich. It's a quick uh, surprise move that's designed to um, paralyze, in this case, the Gaddafi command structure with shock, but they haven't succeeded, and the shock is now wearing off. First of all, carpet bombing. The Daily Telegraph boats, boasts that Royal Air Force was bombing with Paveway 4 Bunker Busters, the Royal Air Force Brimstone System, was raining down death on civilian populations on the road leading into Tripoli from the west. I've traveled it myself. Apache helicopters were strafing civilians with machine guns to open up the way for these rebels, or tebels, as they're sometimes called, terrorist rebels. These are Al-Qaeda killers, make no mistake, with a larding of uh, golden youth. Uh, revolutionary enthusiasts or whatever they are, or tribal vendetta artists. They're there, too. The big difference was that on Saturday uh, evening at 8 p.m., when the hour of iftar marked the end of the Ramadan fast, renegade mosques all over uh, Tripoli put out the call to rise up against Gaddafi. This was then underlined by a speech by the vermin Jalil from from Benghazi, saying you have to rise to the occasion. So he's calling for an insurrection. Uh, these are pre-infiltrated death squads that then simply open fire on civilians. The civilians, in many cases, shoot back with their own Kalashnikovs. So the net effect of this in the night between Saturday and Sunday is limited, because a lot of these uh, death squads get cut down by armed Libyan civilians defending their homes and defending their families. Then, at the same time, though, We've got an amphibious landing. The NATO fleet, we don't know how many, 15 warships are off that coast. They use amphibious landing craft to land more death squads 
of al-Qaeda terrorists under the command of NATO officers, European officers, in many cases, therefore, the absolute colonial model of what it used to look like in these parts of the world. Um, this was then accompanied by Al Jazeera uh, putting out fake stories that Gaddafi had left the country, that Saif, Mohammed, and Kamis Gaddafi had been captured, that the Kamis Brigade had capitulated, all false, all completely hooked up, big lies, uh, electronic information warfare. The um, NATO electronic warfare was putting out text messages uh, saying it's time for Gaddafi to go, SMS, and Libyan television, of course, was bombed. This, this was then credited to the, to the rebels. Yeah, right. Uh, not the rebels, but NATO bombing. This is a NATO operation from beginning to end. It is Operation South Mistral, Operation Harmatan, and this particular phase is called Operation Mermaid Dawn. Some say Operation Bride Dawn. I think Operation Siren is better. The sirens are the ones who lure the gullible mariners and sailors to their deaths on the rocks, and maybe that's uh, something for the NATO fleet to consider. This obviously achieved tactical surprise because it, 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 it obviously relied on a logistics which is far beyond what the rebels had previously had. Previously had. However, as we see from other military examples, if you don't get 100% victory, if you don't win completely with this kind of a thing, the fact that your forces are actually weak and disorganized as, as the aggressor will eventually become clear to the temporarily stunned adversary. So the Gaddafi command structure did not disintegrate. Some units uh, became disoriented, and some of them may have temporarily dis disintegrated. But uh, as the stun effect work, uh, wears off, then you can rally. You can rally, provided that you have the moral fiber. We'll give some examples from the American Civil War. And the way the rallying has worked is the presence of defying, defiant rallying figures in particular. When Saif Gaddafi appeared at the Rixos Hotel in the night between Monday and Tuesday, he immediately tore the mask off the entire Al Jazeera, BBC, CNN, Voice of America, Big Lie campaign. And don't, let's, let's also not forget this uh, hurrah Libya, the free Libya of the... Uh, of the CIA and the State Department. Uh, this was a real epiphany. When Saif came there to the Rixos, smiling, relaxed, supported by armed people, about to go on a tour of, uh, of the city, some journalists went with him. This proved that this entire thing was a big lie. Now, at that point, some soldiers who had thrown away their uniforms, uh, I think, went out and tried to find the uniforms and put them back on. In, between, in the night between Tuesday and Wednesday, another figure of great courage, Musa Ibrahim, the information minister put out his own call for resistance. And now between Wednesday and Thursday, we've had, uh, I think, three radio broadcasts by Gaddafi himself on Wednesday saying, look, I have uh, left this compound, but this is a tactical move. That's quite right. It's a tactical move. And on Thursday, two more calling for resistance and above all for the uh, allied tribes to march on the capital and to envelop these um, uh, Libyan, uh, well, the, not the Libyan uh, forces, but the uh, the Benghazi rebels, the uh, the Al Qaeda uh, forces. So that I think is is some idea of it. Now let's just look at some of the some of the military um, e examples here. It's clear that this the nature of the war has now changed. Up to now, Gaddafi has been forced to defend uh, relatively fixed lines, and that's a disadvantage because you're under this NATO bombardment. Any fixed position is going to be bombed to kingdom come by the NATO Air Force. Uh, up to now, that has been the lot of the Gaddafi forces. They've had to defend population centers. Now this has flipped. It's now the rebels who have to defend population centers, whereas the Gaddafi forces go into a war of movement where they can strike where they want to. Uh, they don't have a geographic basis anymore. You don't want to defend a compound like that because you, you, you uh, hunker down in that compound, NATO's going to bomb you. You don't want to defend any city, theater or any place else. That will simply lead to NATO bombing. But now it's a war of movement where the rebels have got to man the checkpoint, and uh, the shots will be coming at them out of the dark. We'll be back in just a minute.